Hi, this is the interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I thought about it before we began. <laughs> it's, it's like we're twins working against each other. We need to get into synchronicity. Okay. Let's <laughs> I think we were too much in sync. <laughs> let's take a couple of deep breaths. You know what I want? I want to switch on my lights because it's bouncing okay. terrible things and I'm not comfortable. It's maybe making me light up better, but staring at a few LED lights is just not cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, so let's take a few deep breaths together and whoever is listening can also take a few deep breaths. So if go into the feeling of your heart chakra and observe it. Like what 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 are you feeling? You're asking me out loud or are you asking me telepathically? Yeah, what are you feeling? Yeah, what are you feeling here? Yeah. Well, from when you said, okay, no, we'll just go to the heart. Okay. Um I'm feeling like jagged crystals. <laughs> It's like hard and cold and beautiful. That's what I'm feeling. <sighs> I'm feeling... Um, yeah, I'm feeling calmness. I'm feeling calmness. Yeah. Great. <laughs> Actually, like, just not like uh, bliss and not uh, anxiety, just uh, calmness. Yeah, it's been very amazing transformation. So your name is Penelope. Penelope. Hi. Awesome. And I'll and just your pronounce, name is... pronounce, yeah, you, you say it how you said it. My name or your name? No, my name. Right. Um, can you Alosha. say it first? Alosha. Alosha. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people can't pronounce it because there's no such a soft yo in the language. It's like an E with two dots. Um, mm. Spell it Y-O, but then they call me Alyosha or Alosha. And it's uh, <clears throat> language is actually very important, the way that the language is. Like we have 800 uh, words for the 800 um, qualities, words for the word love to describe our feeling of love 800 and um wow. just like english language i think has 15 words to, to describe um success and different ways of success um you know so the russian is very much a feeling language mm -hmm. yeah 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 so it's very 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 different it's based on feelings descri very descriptive yeah mm -hmm. So we don't know what we're going to talk about, but, uh, you know, we're just going to let it flow. The, 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 the theme that I'm pushing right now um, is to show, to show people that there is a way to get out of fear, that, uh, you know, living in fear is not normal. Uh, let's, you know, it's just like a statement, you know, it's not normal. So... I was able to get out of fear, um, quite a few fears in the last three months. I just, I hit a rock bottom with a second divorce. My son that wasn't speaking to me and still I'm not in connection with him. Financial absolute rock bottom broke was. And, um, and then I was like, instead of pointing fingers, like, Trump, Putin, I'm just over exaggerating for a joke. <laughs> Why did I want it? Because mm -hmm. the reality is um, a manifestation of our wishes. Our wishes is the anti-matter that creates the matter. Mm -hmm. Let me give you an example, uh, a very good example about... Five years ago, I was after my previous, my first uh, marriage, and I was so alone. And I, one of the evenings, I 
scream out loud, not in scream out loud, but in tears of this loneliness or the sadness. I just speak to the universe and I remember my first girlfriend from when we were 13, 14, just before I immigrated out of Moscow to South Africa. And I remembered Alona and I was like, Alona, where are you? And I just, in this emotions with goosebumps, just say it out like that. I haven't spoken to her since 1994 and it was two year 2009, 2019. So we're talking about probably 24 years. She calls me the next evening. Hmm. Another example would be, and I'll hand over to you, would be to like a week ago, I'm sitting with, um, what, $10 in my account, not freaking out. I mean, I've got avocado, I've got eggs, I've got cheese, I've got like all the food, fish in the fridge, like everything is stacked. And because I'm working with God, finally came to God three months ago. <laughs> I was going, I, was, I thought I could, do, yeah, I thought I could do it without God. Um, Happy birthday. Hey? Happy birthday, I said. Yeah, exactly. But uh, just, um, I did, you know, it got so hectic. It was so, such a rock bottom that eventually you, you inevitably go on your knees, tears, not drooling, and you're like, God, please help me. I can't do it alone. You know, mm. a week ago, I'm sitting with $10 in my account and I'm like, and there's this workshop bus to in my country. Usually I travel out for workshops to America, to California, like Thailand, wherever there's interesting workshops on bioarchitecture and like natural water filtration and on biomimicry and all these amazing things that have to do with, um, you know, building new types of temples for the humans, you know. <laughs> I go and learn from top masters and we'll chat a little bit about that as well. But I, um, now there's one in my country, I'm like, you know, uh, and it's vast. The vast is very interesting because it's where you make openings, where you have windows, south, east, what crystals you put on different directions of, um, you know, northeast, southwest, to balance out energies. And uh, what I'm learning is pretty powerful stuff because it's um, it really is either cancer or or bankruptcy or abundance versus uh, and health if you have right positioning of windows, doors, um, like a toilet, having a toilet on a certain space in relation to the center of your home or flat is very bad, like very, very bad. It, 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 like on, you know, I don't want to give exact, but I believe, you know, I don't want to give exact because it's all in my notes and I'm, you know, I'm just a student right now. But uh, so... Anyway, I really want to attend to this workshop. I've got ten dollars in my had had ten dollars in my account. I'm like, I look at the icon. The uh, I've got a, a Jesus Christ, um, and I'll talk a little bit about Jesus later. And it's nothing to do with religion. It's not the guy that's on the cross hanging there. Nothing to do with religion, and nothing to do with sinners and shame and guilt. None of that bullshit. Okay, it's not a religion even. Uh, it's just a guy that I choose to believe in uh, that can take me out of any, you know, a higher being, you know, because so many people have prayed towards him. They have created this figure, whether he was or he wasn't, it doesn't even matter. But two billion people are praying to him every day. They obviously made him into something. So, you know, yeah. So I choose to have him as my brother, as my friend, and as a, as a higher higher connection to creator. That's through him. It could be anybody for you. It's just I choose to believe that. You know, it, it works for me. You know, um, and I speak to him and say, I state my will. I'm going to this workshop, and I need fifteen hundred dollars in within four days. Guess what? <laughs> $1,500 exactly come within four days. Uh, and that's how I live. Today, I had um, $4, $5 in my account after I went to the shop. No freaking out, no panic, no pouring head out here. I can even show you uh, right now, just to show you how it works, my reality, how it's working for me. Um, where is my email program? Uh, $150 came in um yeah 
they just water course. They, they bought my water course and here $150 just, just came in. So uh, that's how it has been working. When I need more, I'll get more. When I get a family with children, of course, I'll be looked after. Right now, I need what I need and I get what I, what, what I ask for what I need. Uh, you know, to eat well, to I'm dressed, my flat is paid for the end of the month. But I'll just want to hand over to you. I just threw that in to show that living without fears, with the support of the high, higher creator, I couldn't do it without a creator. Without a creator, I thought the reality is objective and I had no role in it. I'm just this little ant on this huge planet and it's a scary place. Now, three months ago, four months ago, I changed my perception after hitting that rock bottom that there is no objective reality. I am a creator because cats have kittens, dogs have puppies. <laughs> God has gods as babies. <laughs> so I'm little God, baby God, okay? And you're baby goddess. We're all created in the image of God and we are manifestors of our reality and we take accountability and responsibility for our life to the fullest even even for the war in ukraine and even other battles all over the world so from that position i feel like i'm in power like i want to open up my shoulders mama like i feel like i get wings because well there's no such thing as objective reality no more scary i like i said i state my will and i get the money i need no fear no fear. I just showed you guys four, five dollars this morning in my uh, this afternoon in my account, and this just came in. I, I, I wasn't even thinking. It, it just wasn't even a, a doubt that it wouldn't come in. Mm -hmm. it wasn't even a doubt. A, 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 what, what doubt? You know, as long as you're living to your true uh, to your truth. So you know, betraying yourself. You're not going to some fucking job. Sorry for swearing that you hate. Yeah. You are not betraying yourself in some relationships where you feel humiliated and obviously by choice, <laughs> uh, and you continually, continually to, to 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 have that. As long as you're not betraying yourself, which lowers your vibrations terribly, mm -hmm. uh, and you are with connection with God. Not as position of sinners and, oh, oh my God, this guy is going to throw lightning bolts at me and I'm going to get to hell. None of that bullshit, okay? Just co collaboration, collaboration, relationship, friendship with whatever you choose, okay? Then, you know, how could anything go wrong? As long as you are, you know, your gifts, your talents, what you came to earth to do, just do it. So for me, I ran a one hour, 45 uh, 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 Zoom session this morning, inviting people and explaining to them about Russia, why Russia is the last sane place on earth where traditional values are honored, where, um, you know, uh, you're not going to have children changing, you know, cutting off their genitals and putting on something else. And the parents can't even go against that. You know, none of that bullshit. And I was sharing about that because that's, uh, I've taken on responsibility to uh, awaken two billion more, not Christians, but two million, two billion more people who spiritual people, like people who you know uh, understand that there is more to beer, uh, wanking, and cigarettes. You know, um, so with that, um, yeah, with that response, not responsibility, with that excitement to share that, be part of inviting two billion people to our a massive country, you know, and I'm and doing certain steps towards it. Um, how can I not be looked after? But if you're sitting on your couch complaining about life, saying Trump and Putin, objective reality has nothing to do with me, they, the evil ones are causing havoc in my life, you get it. <laughs> Do you get the havoc and the evil ones and uh, the terrible disasters that come with it? The bankruptcy, the ending up on a tent in San Francisco um, because you know that's what you believed in. 
So if you believe in objective reality with the evil ones, the Trump and Putin and, and Biden that are causing shit in your life, then you, you get the proof of that, factual proof that that is how it works. Mm -hmm. If you believe that you are a creator and you are responsible for everything in your life, then you get proofs of that. Convincing anyone otherwise is close to impossible. Mm -hmm. When people came to me and showed, told me about Jesus, I was like, fuck off, you know, a fanatic. So I'm probably sounding the same fanatic, but I'm telling you, it's not the same Jesus that everybody's praying to because they're like this to him and I'm on par. I'm not, I'm not, of course, you know, you know, I'm still not looking up to him, but it's like a brother to me. It's a live dialogue, live dialogue. I ask a question, I get an answer. And not just ask from him, I ask from him. I ask from spirit. Spirit is the collective soul of humanity, as, as I believe, yeah? And I ask for from creator, from source. So there's three, you could call it entities or whatever, that I, that I talk to. And they all have different answers, by the way. Completely, not complete, but they're very they're different answers. So that's just, I'm handing over to you, but that I wanted to share that a little bit. Ooh, okay, let's take a breath with that. <laughs> oh. hmm. Good one, good. Alyosha, so, Boyan Ra, Kev Mina Fwalcha, Arach and Dinya and Shaw, Smith to Penelope, Agus Tamaj and Shaw, Air Streamlining Diamonds, Nilasagam Gawil Shaw, Podcast de Gra, No Kajay, um, Met Alyosha in this web of interconnectedness that we all are a little bit too much maybe these days and yeah there's some kind of a spark there so whoever is witnessing this you know whether you're physical or not it's you know an unfolding of something well at least physically it seems like it's in real time i yeah. want to just state that um i don't know how the connection is so maybe I'm going to try to speak slower because at times I felt like if I moved that the connection would would go like with Alyosha, you know, and uh, so I'm wondering when you were frozen, if that was if I was also freezing. So, yeah, this is our first meeting and just didn't even know how to say his name properly, didn't even know what the name was. <laughs> and um yeah, as you can hear. So, okay, uh, let me speak for me first. So, Smisha Penelope, I'm Penelope here. I'm in the west of Ireland. And um, yeah, we're conversing through English uh, with our, I don't know, sharing a bit about our physical background and our spiritual background, it, it feels like. And it feels like um, of the many, we are but two other people right now burning with passion and purpose and some kind of a vision for kind of I feel like it is I don't want to put words in anybody's mouth but I can only speak from here like there's something beyond this backdrop of mainstream life like this is what we're supposed to be living and existing in and um, I didn't really know anything about Alyosha it's you know you know how the internet works you suddenly next thing you end up somewhere that you never expected and in this case I um, <laughs> yeah just caught a couple of things and then bio architecture turned up and I'm really interested in in this um look forward to my future where um, I can hopefully have more of this element in my life I was really interested in the I'm sure like everybody 20 30 years ago I'm late to the party but you know Mike Reynolds and the earthship and here in Ireland of course it's very wet and cold so um bioarchitecture there's it seems like it's limited and it feels like we're just copying the Germans and with the whole 2020, all this stuff about Ukraine and Russia, and it's like it's opened up a whole like, wow, what's going on out there? Actually, you know, it was all quiet, like, you know, it's like, oh, no, you're not allowed to know what's happening in the East and you're not allowed to really know what's happening in the West and all this. And it it really feels like a big opening up. And I feel like it's exponentially, you know, really deepening into something that is going to sound a little bit fairy now but yeah beyond our kind of physical timeline I feel like there's there's some kind of um corresponding connection like from our spiritual lineage mm -hmm. I don't normally talk like this on on my podcast streamlining diamonds so we're going to share this 
um, meeting. So I just gave my usual introduction to my podcast, which was named Streamlining Diamonds. Um, but yeah, um, so yeah. Um, and I, I thank think... You for I think this new reality that we're actually wanting to create is this reality based on no fear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no this, argument. This is this is where we're going, Penelope. Yeah, uh, yeah because you know it's we're so accustomed. I was so accustomed in my past, and I know many people in the world are still living in in deep fear and the news are not helping you know in fact they're the ones that are stirring it up but yeah, trust me you could even live with fear um, by choice you know like in in my childhood at the age of five when ussr collapsed and americans to basically american government took over our our government and uh melted our tanks, melted our submarines for steel, <laughs> melted all our factories, cut everything up, sold all the equipment and left a hundred million people without jobs. Um, uh, you know, at that time of the collapse, the cable TV came in because before it was just really nice cartoons for children, very warm with, mm -hmm. with deep meaning. And then suddenly Chip and Dale came, Barbie came and horror movie came. And so the horror movies were played with pornography on um, when the children get home from school, uh, one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, parents are at work and there's just pornography and a horror movie streaming on main TV. Uh, that's what happened with us. Uh, with pornography was a little cin uh, uh, cinemas. They were just showing lesbians and gay people there. And it was such a shock. You can imagine USSR conservative people coming out and all the children were allowed in the cinemas where pornography is being shown. And so quite a bit of scarring happened there. And I, I, I wasn't going to the pornography theaters. I was watching the, the Freddy Krueger for about four years continuously at the age of five. But there were other children that were chose to play soccer. So as my frequency was low because I had my own trauma from my father and my mother and my dad drinking alcohol quite, quite severely, my frequency was very much attuned to the fear you know, like a radio receiver. So when Freddy Krueger came, I was like, that's what I needed for as sick as it sounds to somehow find sanity in my life. I, I don't even know. I still need to sit in. But, you know, other boys, they're like, well, what Freddy Krueger? We're playing soccer. We're having fun outside. You, you know what I mean? So I, I feel like everybody, what, what they need, they definitely get it in this world. So, but fear, it's not normal to feel fear. That panic attack that one feels, I'll be very specific in the, in the heart chakra. Sometimes it moves up a little bit. Maybe some people get it in their bellies, but it's that deep penetrating fear. And I know it. I know, I know it. Uh, um, yeah, it's just not normal to feel that. So, but, you know, I can tell you, like, stop watching news. Stop, you know, what, or listening to, like, the social media about... Russia, Ukraine, because I was following the Ukraine war as well, closely, very closely for two years. In fact, before COVID, I was never watching any news. And then COVID hit, I'm like, oh my God, you know, I need to know so I don't get stuck stranded in a country, you know, which countries are being closed. And, and that led to like just getting stuck into COVID story. And then the next thing, the Ukraine start, thing started. And, uh, and I finally, about three months ago, I said, I got such depression and divorce that I was like, oh my God, do I continue watching this? And I actually put a rope over my neck about four and a half months ago. I was ready to go, I tugged it on my neck. And I was like, I had it, you know, with, with depression, with life. And I was like, do, 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 do I continue watching it? Or I radically, like Victor Schauberger says, you turn 180 degrees and you start going into the opposite direction. So I chose to focus because we have a woman within us and a man. And a woman within us is the creator. Mother gives birth to a child, yeah? So what woman, what the woman part in us uh, takes in through visual, through feelings, through emotion, we give birth to that. So if we continue breeding that stuff, watching it, freaking out, talking about it, oh, do you know the 
the evil Russians. And you don't even know the full story. You know, you don't know that <laughs> the war started because Ukraine was about to get into NATO to put in nuclear missiles 230 miles away from Moscow. Nuclear missiles 200 that can reach Moscow in two minutes, 22 seconds. What would America do if uh, Russia decided to put uh, um, a nuclear missile that can reach New York in two minutes and 22 seconds? Fuck, they wouldn't let that shit go down nearly, nearly. So why should we take it? So guy, the people, you know, this is to, you know, it's Russians fighting versus Russians right now. My grandmother is from Ukraine. About 30% of our population has grandmothers or mothers or fathers from Ukraine. It's Russians fighting versus Russians right now. Why? To learn the biggest spiritual lesson. Fine. If you think we are the, uh, to Ukrainians, if you think we are the enemy, but Christ said, love God like yourself and love um, your enemy. That's the biggest spiritual lesson I think that's coming out here. Um, you know, just to cap the thing on Ukraine, uh, uh, there's no atheist at war, at battlefield, Penelope. No atheist. They go in atheists, they come out believers, trust me. Also, many, many stories that uh, moms would say uh, before he went to the war zone, he wouldn't like clean, he would just lie on the bed, drink beer and like not help with any cleaning, you know, just lazy bum. Came back from the war zone, mom, how can I help you? Completely changed man. So who are we getting goosebumps? Who are we? Oh my God. Who are we to say that this is a wrong thing and it's not a, a spiritual enlightenment experience that's uplifting the whole planet right now? So that's, you know, we can finish that story, but just, you know, the, so people understand that it's not so simple and as like what the media says, and it's not so simple as even to, uh, it, to see the perfection. I choose to see the perfection in everything that happens with me and around me. And that's a phrase I'm starting to utilize quite often. And I say it aloud because we program ourselves cells through our words, but handing over. Ah, oh, just have to breathe that down. So can you hear me? Yeah. yeah of course, very well. I can see you very well. I can hear you very well. Great. Yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, I just went uh, last night to see uh, a movie, a documentary on a, on a hip hop group from Belfast. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this part of the world is, it's like, a, it's almost like a different country compared to like where I live, like if this is Ireland, right? Sorry, it's a very Irish thing to do. And if this is Dublin mm -hmm. and there's England and all the rest of Europe, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm here, I'm in the West of Ireland and, mm -hmm. and up here is Belfast, you know, these six counties here that are, you know, divided up into Northern Ireland. And to me, it's like, it's the same old story when you spoke about you know, just there speaking about the Ukraine and Russia, it's so familiar. Um, I have kids and the father of my two youngest kids are, he's from Belfast. So um, he's a good bit older than me as well. So, you know, he described how it was, you know, one minute you're living on your, your, your house, your neighborhood, and your auntie and your grandmother are just there in the house next door. The next minute, some government from England comes and they make a line and suddenly you know, you, you can't go to the same church, you can't, all the rest. And it's just like a nightmare. And I think it's, uh, it's just like, it's the same um, theme, the same topic of division. So whereas when you were saying fear, I, I couldn't help thinking for me, it's, it's more like, um, I mean, everybody hears something different when we hear the same song, right? Or we can watch the same film, but get go home with different ideas. So when you were speaking about fear, um, I was hearing fear. I was also feeling like division for me. That's a big one. And um, yeah, it's like uh, creating a society where to be divided is normal. And 
Somebody said to me recently, oh, our brain, I think it was my daughter, she said, our brain is wired for negativity. You know, we're more interested when something negative happens. You know why that is? Do you know why that is? She called it a negative confirmation bias. But I mean, I would I would guess it's partly conditioning and also like all the generations of trauma that is still in our cells. That's what I would guess. Yeah, yeah. So, so it, I'm just I'm not going to interrupt, but just to put that little piece in for towards what you said. So, for the last, as far as I understand, uh, the past has been pretty dangerous for us. We had to protect ourselves from animals, like wear skins and shelter, and it was a dangerous place. Like really, we had to like battle for food and uh, you know constant wars, like wars like not now. Now you know we're still sitting in a comfortable space and the rockets are not falling on our head, you know. But uh, so it was a pretty dangerous place. So a human is accustomed to always look out for the worst case scenario because it was really a dangerous. Uh, you know, you, you always either can a lion can eat you or something else can eat you. Or, or you need to go out to find this food or, uh, you know, uh, uh, pulling out a tooth was so painful because it wasn't pain. It was just a dangerous place. So we were we got accustomed to see the world through this lens of um, this fear, ne negative, freaking out. It's a dangerous world out there. It's just a lens. And, uh, you know, uh, trying to change it by yourself, I think it's close to impossible. That's why I reached out to God eventually and just boom, like that, you know, yeah. yeah. Mm, beautiful. But handing over. Thanks. Yeah, that really makes sense. It's like a filter, the fear filter. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I work in um, not so much outer architecture, but more like inner architecture, like just, you know, working with our... Um, I suppose with intergenerational um, inner leadership and this kind of like desire and where we think that we're making all the wrong choices. And I feel like, I think it's very obvious and easy to see that it's not us making the choices. You know, it's still this very old part of the brain or whatever the science wants to call it today. You know, it's this part that is like, I'm still carrying around the fear <laughs> and the, the anger from my grandmother, great grandmother, I'm still carrying that around mm. until I like you described being on the ground and with all the sobbing and everything and really letting that out, you know, letting it melt, I suppose. And then it's never the end of the story, but at least it's, you know, helping to, yeah, to relax this filter a little bit so that I can feel like I'm not insane because I think um, there's a lot of people here, like where I live. Um, there's a lot of, I suppose a lot of people that would um, would love to add to what you were sharing because there's a lot of actually there's a lot of your Eastern Europeans have come to live in Ireland, so um, I I I haven't uh, I haven't watched I didn't I don't have a TV and I don't listen to the radio, and I and I don't look at newspaper I don't have newspapers yeah. like <laughs> yeah for, same for a long time. yeah and when you said about COVID and. Uh, I was really appreciating like my privilege because here in Ireland, I didn't have to worry about that. I didn't have to be concerned. So I just kept my head like thinking about other things, you know, but it's great. Yeah. Yeah. I can feel that resentment, you know, like I had like a really old man here, granddad, and he was kind of worrying and, and um, he said, no, the Irish people are not going to fall for it. You know, we'll just, we're just going along with the government for now. And I said, I really hope so. And the next thing he was wearing all these masks and telling me I have to wear his mask. And, and, you know, it was, it was amazing really, because I feel like it was, yeah, it's a shame. It was kind of like a, a sacrifice really for the people that, you know, didn't get to be here today. But for me, it's like, wow, there, there was a lot that I, I got to experience and I got to see in, in that time. Why do you think it was a sacrifice? Well, because like I'm here now, right? Mm -hmm. and, and so many others that, you know, like you said, like when you were watching the news, you were like, well, this is my words, but you were like, <laughs> I don't want to be watching the news, but I feel like I have to. And after a while, you were strong enough to say, fuck off. I don't need the news, right? Now I, now I know the story. 
whatever i suppose right yeah. and like other people they kind of they they live by that story and they died by that but that wasn't their story and it's like i just think of all the weight that's you know added to you know that that cycle of gen of that generation and i think yeah i know we can also help and we can help to heal that you know but i feel like yeah well i got the benefit of that and and they yeah it's just a human i suppose it's just the energy whenever mm -hmm. whenever i feel emotions i feel like it's just the energy of this life force coming through and yeah i i guess i'm still angry about um so there's a couple of things i want to i want to uh, comment on first of all this energy we need to name it so this feeling that you were feeling right now when you started to get emotional because before also uh, i wasn't naming these feelings i was just energy is just flowing through me let it flow but you need to like you know uh, you need i believe not, not you you don't need to do anything but i believe that one needs to name it like is it sadness for the people you know like you said you're angry or you're sad like it's important to name this feeling that you're feeling that's allowing your tears to come through you're feeling something it's not just energy of course it's energy everything is energy my this candle burning is energy but that feeling that made you cry now is you cry you felt something and that something is important to name it so maybe you want to name it hmm. okay what is energy what is it what 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 were you feeling and that's just yeah for anybody what? that goes out there that that feels things that you know maybe try and name what you're feeling give it a word it's specific maybe color if we're talking about energy but it's still a feeling of but yeah handing off so what i what were you feeling now uh, i was feeling like well i mean there was the sadness of you know so of the suffering and also this anger this feeling of annoyance and of of you know feeling like it was was it really necessary and the fact that i feel like the most vulnerable people are taken advantage of you know and um okay so god gave us free will correct yeah yeah i know i know nothing, nothing straps the fucking tv to our head and makes us watch it okay a person can at any moment can uh open a book take out some clay switch on some music take out a guitar lesson go to a vo vo vocal lesson uh, learn to i don't know whatever there's a million things one can do but he's if he's choosing to sit in front of tv with shaking legs panicking out how terrible the world is that's obviously what he needs now let's go back to what i said that our reality is the manifestation of our wishes so if you do not like something in your reality, then you need to look at your wishes, truly look at your wishes. Um, for example, you know, when I asked a question about what, like, why did I end up with a divorce, a, a son that's not speaking to me and a total bankruptcy, not because when you point fingers, Trump, Putin, Biden, Mm, you're not going to get anywhere because, uh, you know, forever you'll be blaming them and life after life after life, a million lives, you'll eventually get to your knees and you'll say, okay, I'm the creator of all of this that I'm seeing in my life. Yeah. And, and that's a million lives. Who are we to say that he needs, he, he's suffering uh, 999,000 lives. He's terribly suffering. That's what he needs. That's what he needs to, to, to get to that one lifetime, that one eureka moment that just like, oh my God, I'm the creator of this. So first of all, we need to start believing in the perfection of everything, okay? Uh, in the perfection that Hitler murdered 27 million Russian people and um, 27 million, okay? Just take that number because it's not in your history books. And your history books are still written that American allies won the war. America lost maybe 200,000 soldiers at most, maybe 500,000 soldiers, and, and they paid, they fueled Hitler. <laughs> they fueled Hitler, they gave him ammunition and money. Um, so, you know, uh, and they won him when they saw that Russia is winning, they won him and they took a whole bunch of land and fifty more than 50% 50 of the world's gold. So, you know, if we go into the real history, but um, who are we to say that it's not uh, perfect? You know, who are we to say that? So what, what I'm trying to say is I think we should be 
taking accountability for our own lives and instead of feeling uh, and wasting our energy on how uh, uh, all these people uh, get born with fear and die with fear with a TV strapped to their head, invisible, with invisible sticky tape, um, which by choice they stick it in and they want to be in it. Like I want to, I wanted to watch the Freddy Krueger while the boys were playing soccer, you know, because that's what I needed to go through. Uh, for all my life, I thought I, I was blaming the Americans, the American government for coming and installing that cable TV and switching on Freddy Krueger at one o'clock in the afternoon as I got home from from school, from school. But I stopped blaming because, I, uh, you know, because somebody said to me, but I never watched that. I was playing games and we were chasing each other and playing hide and seek, uh, you know, so we have free will. And uh, a man has to, a man, a woman has to stand up to the God and goddess within them and say, I I've had enough. I will not partake in the mask shit. I will not partake in the Ukraine shit. I don't want to play this game anymore. And then the next obvious question is, what game do you want to play? The game that I want to play is talk about love. And I'll be talking about a very specific, blissful nice warm-hearted feeling that pouring out from your heart chakra when you just your hands are like this and you're walking in in the park in, in the city in nature through town with traffic mm, and maybe walking of course maybe driving is a bit agitating in traffic and that's why i don't drive in traffic public transport is miraculous here yeah? works like clockwork um, you know, so I choose to be in a country where I can walk any time of the day and night, anywhere, and nobody bothers me, nobody touches me. Children run around until 12 o'clock at night at the age of seven, and nobody bothers him. A kid of the age of six years old can catch a train from St. Petersburg, two hour train to school, nobody will touch him. An hour. If he wants to, if he wants to, an hour, an hour train ride to school. If he wants some special walled off school, for example, not from St. Petersburg, but from the nearby areas where there are no walled off school and he catches a train to St. Petersburg to a big city. A six year old, a seven year old kid can catch us an hour train to a wall of school, walk, get on a bus off the train, walk, get on a bus and, and get to his school, seven years old. Hmm. No, it's the norm. Mm -hmm. it's the norm in our villages we don't lock doors you put a stick across you put a stick across your door which shows still <laughs> go google it <laughs> still shows that uh, uh, an owner is not here i don't lock doors send me a picture yeah yeah i'll 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 look for it i'll look for it no no from your neighborhood not from online <laughs> oh uh, i'm not in a village now i'm in a city a city are uh, also very safe, very, very, very safe. Nobody bothers you. Nobody harasses you. Nobody, nobody even asks you anything. Anything. You just, uh, you know. But, but if you are lost, you can come to anybody. People will show you. They'll take your hand and they'll show you how to get uh, to where you need to go. This is normal. This is how it needs to be. So, if you're living in a reality that's different, know that that is by choice. I lived in South Africa for 20 years, 25 years where I was like, where I had a, a, a armed uh, point uh, robbery where they stood with a gun to my head and they robbed me in my house. Then they tied up my son and my ex-wife in our trailer mobile home while I was building a sandbag dome home, dome house and a hundred meters, 300 feet away. They uh, robbed my wife, my ex-wife and my son. They tied them up. And I continued living in there because that's what I needed until I was like, well, I read the books on Anastasia, which are based on this one kin, kin domains, one hectare, um, mm -hmm. you know, that whole story. And I was really inspired and I chose to move to my country. But my choice followed very serious consequences because of COVID, I couldn't sell my house. So this video, I might even show this video now or later or whatever. It's all these things, all these ecosystems that I built that were in this in my property in Johannesburg, South Africa. COVID, I can't sell the couldn't sell the home because property prices down. People don't know what the hell is going on. There is one plane to Russia that's taking uh, expats back. And I, anyway, I got on that plane. I walked out of that home. 
after 12 and a half years of halfway through my mortgage payments, I just walked out. Leaving 100,000 US dollars worth of permaculture ecosystems, pumps, a natural uh, 100,000 liter pool with all the plants, a lot of investment and 12 and a half years worth of mortgage repayments halfway already paid that house over but it was made on mortgage land so you know boom <laughs> i lost it all walked into this country with two suitcases and uh, that's how my ego really got you know <laughs> wrapped into a, a knot and torn and um you know it was very difficult i got on a bicycle here after having a business that was turning over a million dollars in 2007, I got on a bicycle. It was really, 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 really hard for me. But th that was the choice to walk out of indebtedness, of chaos, of fear-based country where you everybody lives with 10,000 volt electrical uh, wires so black people don't climb through. Yeah, I'll, you know, I'm not saying anything wrong with black people, but the, the proportions one white person to 11 black in south africa so it's the black people that are climbing over not the white people that are climbing over obviously there's still white people that are uh, you know bad people <laughs> whatever but you know you know it's not about, about that it's about ten thousand volts on every fence in johannesburg to protect you from robbers and muggers that will want to climb into your home in the middle of the night but the people continue living like that and that's what they need so you know, I think what I'm trying to say is uh, possibly let it go. Let it go. That guy needed to have the TV strapped with invisible scotch to his head and continue running around and saying life is terrible. That's what he needs to live through. Um, you know, uh, you, you, are you making it? What choices are you making? And I'm obviously talking to your audience. I'm talking about to my audience. I chose that I, I I had enough because I got when I got when I put a rope over my neck, I thought, well, that's it. God, just take me. I, I I can't, I can't, I can't continue living with anxiety, with fear, with shaking legs, uh, depression, and and I didn't understand what was wrong because I had money, I had a wife, you know, like sex, like whatever. I had it, like well, what I want, I had it. But I was so unhappy inside me. Um, and then when I divorced, I was freaking out because this fear of loneliness. Now I'm alone. I, I got what I wanted, but now I'm alone. How did I do with that? I never. I was never alone. From the age of 22, I reached out to the first lady who took her hand and boom, I'm married. 12 years, baby, uh, everything, you know. She was a cocaine addict. I didn't care because it, she, it was somebody that cared for me. You know, she was eight years old. I constantly looked for moms. Even when I walked for a walk, I put my hand like this so a woman could lead the way. Now I hold my hand like this. So I, I, I lead the way. So I'm like a man, you know. But, uh, you know, then as soon as that divorced, then I was like freaking out. I scream out that Alona, that my first girlfriend from age of 14, she arrives. We spend uh, two years uh, also in a strange relationship. Then immediately I go into the next lady that accepts me. She wrote me, Zoe, my previous wife, she wrote to me and I came and visited her in five years, boom. And suddenly after 19 years of being in, always in relationship that somebody uh, cuddled me and loved me and hugged me, somebody, now suddenly nobody's hugging me and I'm all alone. And this is what I'm going through right now. Uh, it was huge, like uh, dating sites constantly, or dating sites, but who is somebody? And then eventually you're like, and the, the, the more you're not loving yourself, the more people are pushing you away. Like, we stop writing to me, like, you know, and you're like, but I'm not ugly. Like, what's wrong with me? You know, and you're feeling this thing of with money. If I don't have money, then I, I will not find a woman because the outer reality was showing me that a woman wants a man who knows a good car, good house, and, you know, that can provide for her. You know what I mean? This is what one reality is showing me. Another reality is showing me that the woman that will take a man even without money as long as he's got an open heart and he can love and care for her. That is also a reality that exists. So what I'm trying to say, multiple realities are existing simultaneously at the same time. The history, present and past is very mind boggling. So when we start working with this, 
loving feeling that's because the state of consciousness uh, I'll, I'll share one last story and it's a very important one uh, three months ago when i hit that absolute rock bottom i was traveling south i had my all four by four van packed with all my hyper adobe these are the roles that i use for building construction cal, cal earth those domes that they build in california with white bags that's super adobe uh, hyper adobe is the potato bags it's the shade cloth shade cloth made in a, a net in a shoot in a shoot long shoot 500 meter rolls one and a half thousand feet long uh like big rolls about one 40 centimeters one and a half feet in wide anyway i've got all my rolls in my car i'm all, all everything that i've collected in four years and so in in russia five years and i'm traveling south and suddenly the money ran out like and then i'm like eh, i can't move I, I'm in my old home. Property is very cheap in Russia if you go out to villages. You can buy yourself a home with two hectares of land. You'll laugh now uh, for $3,000. Two hectares of land full of fruit trees, full of nut trees, full of food forest, berry forest, all the apples, everything. There's so much fruit you, you, you can't pick it all. With a home that needs a little bit of renovations, strong home, underground cellar, two rooms, and a fireplace that works, all for three, two to three thousand dollars. That's crazy. I'm sitting in this old home because I've given the home that I was building, the the Gothic arch that I was building in Saint Petersburg to my ex-wife. I'm sitting in this old home that nobody lived in for thirty years. It's an old home, you know what I mean? It's three thousand dollars, nothing fancy, and I'm like. And I'm suddenly uh, left with no money. And I'm packed to go south. I want to go to Crimea. I want to go to Black Sea. I want to go to the mountains. I want to travel. I'm, after my divorce, I'm like, I'm free. And I'm like, the money just goes, Ching! I'm like, eh. mm -hmm. and there's the next word, very important. Agreement. I agree accept not a good word agree that that is my reality this is the case mm -hmm. i am immobile i don't use a voice of that i don't, didn't have enough money at the time to travel you know you need petrol you know plus a car may break down you know what i mean you need you, you know for you, you need a couple of thousand dollars not even a couple you need a thousand dollars to like you know at least to just start the engine and travel two thousand miles south you know just like you know and um and i don't have internet in that village because it's never you know the, you know my home i didn't have internet so i'm like and that's when i realized because i started to listen to this guy radamir which is uh who brought me to no he didn't bring me to christ i came to christ myself just by mistake walking into a church and i asked oh there, there was um seraphim seraphim is one of the saints uh, and I asked who who is who is he, he was he's a painting of him on the on the wall. And I asked the lady who sells candles and uh, little icons, yeah, the pictures. I asked her who is this guy, and she says, "No, this is Seraphim." Uh, and she gives me this icon, you know. And then she says, "Do you have Christ?" I'm like, "No, I don't have Christ." So she gives me this this icon of Jesus Christ, you know. Uh, and I I didn't know what to do. I was in such a depression, such a low state. I, Started kissing this one, started kissing this one. I put one on my, on my forehead, I put one on my heart. And, and so all I had was uh, Christ. I had a prayer. And it's also a very different prayer. It's a very interesting prayer. Maybe we can do it just now. And um, and cold water. Buckets of cold water. just And walking. No internet. Cold water, walking, prayer. And I knew one thing. I'm also going to tell you a very important thing. So agreement that that is my reality so i unpacked my car mm -hmm. you know it's fully packed loaded with probably like 500 pounds of stuff and I unpacked it uh put it in my house got some paint started painting the the windows uh nice because you know they were dark and uh, i just started ripping up the old um, what's it called the wallpaper I started ripping it off I realized that i have a very strong log home so I came into agreement and I started making the best of what I have. Mm. I said, the old reality where I have an anxious knot and panic attacks came, came, brought me to a dead end. 
I came from a million dollar turnover a year to absolute rock bottom. I lost my first business of decorations. I came to rock bottom now. I spent 15 Bitcoins. I sold them at $1,000 each. I was like, woohoo, I won. And they were actually $60,000 not so long ago. So it's like a, 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 a series of really stupid decisions that uh, that really brought me to uh, an absolute rock bottom. And I knew it was all to do with this panic attack, constant running, busy, 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 busy. Now, 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 Duracell bunny, Duracell bunny, yeah? And I knew that that is a fuck up. You know, I I came to a dead end and with no God. So I knew now I'm with God and I knew one thing, a good blissful feeling from a heart chakra. My heart chakra here, you know, a good feeling. If you're feeling this good feeling and you're in connection with God, reality inevitably morphs according to your feeling. Our feelings control our reality. If you're in an anxious knot, you can say all the fucking affirmations of the world. You're going to have, a, a not you, but people are going to have, they're not going to get it. Or they're going to get, or they're going to get, they're going to get it, but they take it from the limited 120 year life force has been given to them. So, and the ones that are really smart, uh, that really think they're super spiritual, they start taking it from their future generations. This energy. Yeah, the energy. Okay, so they get the really nice car that they manifested through watching the books like The Secret, uh, reading The Secret. They, they get the Porsche. They get the five-bedroom, five-story building house. But <laughs> at the cost of four, genera four, five, six, seven generations of... Uh, um, children that are going to be born sick, that are going to have uh, amputations, that are going to be murdered. I don't know, but really they, they took so far forward through ideas like Tony Robbins and all these other spiritual folks that are promoting uh, Louise Hay, all that stuff, all that stuff, very dangerous. You, we need to learn how to generate this energy from the source. And the source is within your heart and from God. If you're not generating it from your heart and from God, you're taking it from the limited 120 years that's been given to you. So anyway, I knew that wait, God... Wait, 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 wait. So pause. So you're saying that, if I understood you correctly, when you're just saying an affirmation without really going and resourcing it from yourself or from the source, then it's, just, it's a kind of like a kind of a spiritual robbery from the future. Uh, if you, you take it from your own uh, 120 years, and then once you've, if you're really smart, okay, if you, if you, if you, if you, that's where you end, if that's all you can do, the next thing that happens is suddenly money disappears and uh usually you one gets into a jail you, you see that left right and center uh, the owner of telegram just been jailed in france uh tinkoff uh, just many many people they were rich and famous and suddenly they're poor and in jail because why hey because why just explain because, this to because they've tapped into this uh, limited energy and when the energy ends the health shuts down Health shuts down. Uh, uh, court cases pile up immediately out of nowhere, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and money runs out. Just some some, some scam on on bank, miraculous scam, and or like these Russian oligarchs that were stealing and uh, partying it up. Suddenly, uh, you know, um, the English world. <laughs> Seize their bank accounts through sanctions. Okay. You know, legally, illegally, it doesn't matter. All is perfect. All is sacred. So, so how do we know that we're not on that path that we're going to be like, we're, that we, you know, obviously, I think what I'm understanding is you're saying it kind of caught up with them or something. It was yeah. like, the, yeah, 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 yeah. So how do, how do I know that I'm not manifesting this kind of a direction? Like, 
you know for, for me it's it's the prayer um it's the prayer it's full belief that you know that it's coming from the source that you're not the source of this beautiful blissful feeling and love that is pouring out of you this beautiful blissful feeling of love we feel it when we take a little first drag of weed and it's that oh and then we get stupid <laughs> you know and then you know but this is way 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 better because it's a clean high you feel it is that blissful feeling you're in connection and direct communication with god you you you're feeling blissful and you just say it, that this is what i need god i give a hand over to you all my needs financial all my needs you know what i want i don't want to know anything i'm handing it over to you in full trust full belief full knowing full knowing and uh and you do your part what what is my part for me four months i was doing nothing i was just piecing myself after my divorce and only recently, a week ago, I took out a pen and I, okay, I'm going to start, uh, you know, getting into not work mode, but what do I love to do, which is designing this home that is heated on laws of physics, like the Earthship. I'm redesigning an Earthship based with sacred geometry and now vast to, to make a temple home for uh, that's so comfortable for a human, for a family where children can play and learn and 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 have frogs that are living ecosystems and, and so on and so forth that's my big project and to go further i want to build villages of these homes with communal centers where co-housing co um co co-working spaces uh 3d printers and other laboratories that children and adults can play and explore and collaborate and make projects. So that's what I really like. Arco Santi, you can Google Arco Santi in Arizona, um, Jacques Fresco Venus Project, and like the eco villages of Russia. I want to merge it into my type of cities. But um, it's a separate thing. That's that's what I really love doing. That's what really turns me on. And most importantly, I want to share the story that I'm sharing to you about love is my new talent. I want to share people that, you know, instead of fear, you can feel this bliss and you don't have to be this fanatic religious, uh, you know, uh, idiot that hits his wall and, uh, and, and fears God who throws lightning bolts from the sky. Because that's not what I believe in. <laughs> I believe that it's a friend that I can just chat to like I'm chatting with you and it's, uh, you know, and I just share love to this per to this. Uh, uh, you know, this invisible guy that I choose to believe that exists. Anyway, back to my story. Um, I'm sitting there at my home. I'm absolutely broke. I, I've, 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 I've agreed that that is my reality. Not fight that I, no, no, no. I, I'm rich. I'm rich. Money is coming. Money is coming. Money is coming. No, it's not fucking there. I'm, I've got food in my fridge. All is good. But I'm immobile. I don't have money to, did not have money to travel down south as per my plan. It's important to not accept because when you accept, it's like, okay, that's my reality. That's my burden. That's the way it's going to be. And God just punished me. And that's just the fuck up I am in. No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying I agree that that is the current reality right now. I am choosing that I want something different, okay? But right now it is this, and I'm not fighting it because I find like Louise Hay and all this other stuff, it's almost like you're fighting it. You're not accepting your reality. Like, and I find it with a lot of uh, Americans, even now, a lot of my friends from America, they're like, no, no, it's gonna get better. No, 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 one, one year, next year, next year, things are going to get better. And I keep on hearing it for five years whilst the country is drowning, literally burning in hell, the new laws being passed that allow your child at the age of 10 to choose to cut his penis off and you as a parent not allowed to say anything otherwise. Laws are being passed like that whilst my friends are saying, no, no, when Trump gets there, things will get better. And I'm sorry I'm over-exaggerating it like a fucking idiot. But guys, 
get it. It ain't getting better. And if you at least look around you and have enough truth, and I know you will understand, and enough truth to say things are getting worse in my country, let's just say, you know, uh, and accept and agree that that is the reality, it's the hugest step you will make because then you'll say, but I, I can live 10 times cheaper in Russia. 10 times cheaper. I can get, I can set my whole life up just by selling my home, getting whatever I can, you know, uh, after paying off the bond and, and everything, this 20-year thing that's dragging. Selling, come, walking out was $100,000. And with $100,000, I can set buy a home, land, and set up a business in Russia. If it's not Russia, Brazil, Mexico, wherever you want to go, you know, will be cheaper, easier. There's no building codes here. There are no building codes here. You can build anything up until 60 feet high, 20 meters tall, and not have it registered at all. And move in there whenever you want, even if it's not finished. How's that? That's the way laws should be made if they're made for the people. And if the roof falls on your head, there's nobody to blame. You build a house. Your builders who... You paid for builder's house. Sorry, buddy. Okay. Sure, you can sue them and the builders and maybe you'll win and maybe they'll pay you. But it's your responsibility as a, as a house owner. Can't blame the government. So I'm sitting there in my home and I'm absolutely mobile. I accept that that is my reality. And I knew that with anxious feeling, I can't carry on because I lost everything. Everything. And I knew that this uh, feeling of bliss will uh, morph my reality according to this feeling. But I don't have proof at that point. I accept. I unpacked my car. I started painting my windows. And the next day, my subscriber donates $1,000. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is working. And since that time, it's been over and over and over. I just showed you now, $4 this afternoon and $150 came in two hours time. I didn't even ask for it. That's the, the, that is even the, the scariest thing. I didn't even say any affirmations. My fridge is full. That's what I need for the next week. Yeah, have it. A consult is coming tomorrow, another hundred dollars. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I, I, all I'm doing, I speak of love, I generate love, uh, I talk to God, I have my cold showers, and I walk and I enjoy myself. Guys, I'm not even working. Just, 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 just I, I've spent eight minutes working in the last four months. I just speak of love, I feel love, and and I share my story. And I believe that I should be provided for because, because that's what I want. And that is enough because I am God. I am God and my wish is enough. And that's it. And money is falling on my head. The less I work, the more money falls on my head because that's what I believed. <laughs> and that is the reality I created. And how, how, so how, how, how does it work? But it's all written there, each to their belief. So handing over to you. That's the story I wanted to share. Was that the, um, the description of the love that you wanted to share? You said, I'll tell you later about this love as well. Yeah, that's it. It's this blissful feeling. Um, I'm not feeling it all the time, but you, I can definitely ask for it. Um, and and uh, I can generate it. Uh, last week, I was doing a Zoom call on about love, and I wasn't feeling it. An hour before, an hour and a half before, I went for a walk. I'm listening to this prayer meditation, um, speaking it out aloud. Eventually, uh, 45 minutes before the Zoom call, I get on my knees. I'm like, Jesus Christ, I want to feel it now. <laughs> now I want to feel it. Give it to me now. I can't go and speak about love if I'm not feeling it. It'll be fake. <laughs> and it's like, Tish. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
just feels like this bliss it's like just inject you with like this amazing amazing something um so maybe we should just uh, i can read out this prayer i didn't translate it i will translate prayers in the future because they're amazing they're, they're, they're way cooler than not cooler they're more potent and they're working prayers uh, from um, uh, the, 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 ch the church prayers, I feel like they're, they're not working for me. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> close your eyes. And you can repeat after me if you choose to. I declare my free will and choose the reality of joy, happiness, and love. I cut out all connections, channels, energy cords that bind me and reach out to other souls, entities, beings, egregors, external gods, images, and people. I claim and return to myself everything that is mine in full, my entire soul. And everything that does not belong to me, I return to their sources, to their owners. My Father and Lord Jesus Christ, my spirit, align all parts of me with my divine essence and my choice of the reality of joy, happiness, and love. And everything that does not agree with my divine essence and the frequency of vibration of the reality of joy, happiness, and love, go to the source right now. They leave my world, my body, my consciousness, my soul, and go into our single source. Spirit of mine, lead by the hand of those who do not know the way. Father and Lord Jesus Christ and my spirit, I thank you that this has already happened. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, uh, it's just an example of one of the prayers. So what we have in there, you declare my free will, very important because we all have free will. So you declare it. When I wanted the $1,500, I don't ask for it. I declared it mm -hmm. uh, like cast in stone. Okay, but at the same time, I accept if this vast to training architecture training is not there for me. I accept that that is not uh, that I won't be for whatever reason, you know, I won't get this money, I won't be able to end up there. But at the same time, I state my free will, I declare it, and I say my wish is enough. I'm God, my wish is enough. And it's all that's needed for me to because that's what I want. I want this experience. But I accept if it doesn't happen, then you know, it ain't me meant to be because it was meant to be $1,500 came, boom. And I caught a plane ticket 3000 miles from where I was. And here I am for 21 day train. Um, another thing we have in this prayer is we connect all cords, ties to any energetical beings that are sucking us, that are connected to us. It's, um, it's our previous relationships. It's, uh, I don't know, I don't know about entities, maybe you can share a little bit, but it's entities that are sometimes sitting and connected to our spinal cords. And, and uh, you know, we might be in some, um, you know, some space where uh, also throughout our lives in the past, we sometimes traded our soul for, um, you know, for this and that, um, for example. Okay, so I just want to explain the soul is, a, is an organ in our body that feels. So it was very nice for me to see that you cried a little bit. That means you have a soul. There are many people that don't have a soul. So the soulless bodies that are walking around and you ask them, what are you feeling? And they'll say, mm, not feeling anything. Uh, and uh, at the best, they'll feel anger. At the worst, they won't feel anything ever. They, they just don't feel anything. They just, how do we do it? How do we end up giving our soul up when something really sad happens and we say, I, I, we say out loud, very much you must, what I'm trying to share with you, our words are very powerful, especially if you add your emotions into it. It's like, there's a reason why it says in the Bible, and I haven't read the Bible. Um, there is a reason why I, I read the children's Bible when I was like 10 years old, but there's a reason why it says that uh, the first, there was a word. 
So guys, be careful of your words. Uh, you know, there's blah, 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 um, continuous talking, blah, 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 discussing this, that, uh, you know, in a cafe about your husbands, how, te how terrible your husbands are. Come home, boom, your husband starts shouting at you. But you, you, you've just told your friend about how terrible your husband is. Your friend now witnessed that in you. He witnessed, she witnessed that in you. It's like, okay, I, I, um, you know, I witness. <laughs> and boom, you get more of that. So, so be careful of what, um, so we trade our soul. So the soul is the organ in our body. Like a heart is an organ that pumps blood. A kidney is an organ that cleans our blood. Yeah. And uh, a soul is an organ in our body that feels. It's responsible for feeling. Um, so it, we, by, by us feeling something terrible in the past and not being able to go through it because maybe we didn't have the right psychological tools or maybe we didn't have God with us or whatever. We chose at that time in the past in that high emotional state to say, I don't want to feel, you know, I don't want to feel this anymore. And you say it out one, two, three, ten times, eventually, boom, you stop feeling. But by stop feeling pain, you're also not feeling the bliss. You're not feeling. You didn't want to feel. So one needs to go through the pain to understand that you are the creator of everything that you see in your reality. You are the creator. So by... um understanding that uh like for me i was playing the game of a victim many many years up until five, six months ago it was a constant victim i'd put my fingers like this i'd hold my fingers like this like a little child uh how a held woman i already showed you uh, they were i would hold them like that so they would carry me a woman was always seven eight years older than me and i would play this victim um and i'll a victim always finds a tyrant. And a victim will come out and cry to his friends, oh, my husband is beating me, he's such an asshole. But you're creating him. You wanted him. I tell you, every victim, you, you change that husband. Uh, let me give you a story. My ex-wife, she was um, psychologically doing processes with people. And, and uh, a woman came to her and says, my husband is a drunkard, he's lying on a couch, he's this and that, and he's like pathetic and blah, blah, blah. So uh, she asked Zoe to work with her husband. So it was, so my wife, my ex-wife Zoe worked with the husband. Suddenly the husband started gymming, started doing cold uh, showers, started getting up on his feet, opened up his shoulders, and the wife was so unhappy that her husband is sadly not this miserable piece of shit that she's always accustomed to, that she could always say, you are such a lazy bum. Suddenly the husband is like, got dressed well, started, stopped drinking. I'm getting goosebumps. Look at that. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> but, and the wife was freaking unhappy. She wanted him back on that couch. It's just showing you. That, this is the reality, guys. Start looking at your life, start looking at your friend's life. You'll see it left, right, and center. Another thing you'll see left, right, and center, when somebody feels terrible, they'll want to step on your head, push you down through a little joke, through something, and, and then they bump, bump pop. In English, uh, maybe Irish phrase, bump pop. You know, they get a bump up by pushing you down. So as soon as you feel that, if you're having the self-love, you're like, dude, your intention is to humiliate me. Your joke, with your joke, because people usually do it through jokes, because it's just joking, man. But after that joke, you're like, you feel like somebody's taking your face and shoved it in, in, a, in cow shirt. You know what I mean? And you're like, everybody laughed and it should be funny, but you come home and you're like, and you're like, you see your child and it's like, not me, I work. That's another thing that happens. It's called the law of compensation, correct? Yeah. So you poke here, something pokes out there. That's how the universe works. You can't poke and nothing comes out. So I just want to hand over to you. But yeah, I'm not, I know I've been rambling on for long, but these are the things I wanted to share. These are very important things because people are carrying on going and, 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 and living in this victimhood, complaining about Putin and Trump, the, uh, you know, 
Queen Elizabeth, you know, she's probably dead. I don't, it doesn't matter. It's like this, but no. Fingers are on you, guys, on you. You are creating this reality. If you don't like something in your reality, look at your wishes, uh, what you really wish for, and look at your inner state. Because if your inner state is running from anxiety and panic attacks, I'm sorry, but affirmations are not going to help you. Mm. I don't say affirmations anymore, anymore. I get into a blissful state. I connect with God and I state my will. I need $1,500 within two days. Thank you. Thank you that this has already happened. And I believe and I know. It comes. I can show you. I can show you five emails times $300 that came into my PayPal uh, last week for me to end up where I am now. There, the five five people in my uh, Telegram group uh, on my... No, I launched a course. I didn't sit on my ass. Uh, here, here. Just, just so we, like, on the same. I'll just quickly show you. Uh, here's my Telegram group. Uh, drafting October 2024. It's a new course I launched. I teach people how to draw. And there are six, six members. There they are, myself and five members, $300 each. <laughs> cool. Yeah, that's how it works. There's an expression in English, or I don't know, my ex said it to me. He said, God helps those who help themselves. Very good phrase. Very good phrase. If I, if I stated the will and I carried on lying on my bed, picking my nose, well, I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sorry, but I, I, you know, okay, what can I do with my talents? Uh, I love to draw. I, lo I love to design this home. Well, wh wh why don't I teach? Why don't I teach a few people how to design a home with me? Guys, would you like to learn how to design a home with me that I've been researching for five years? Sure, would like to. Okay, come aboard. 300 bucks each for first five people. The rest, 444. Mm -hmm. Five people there. So a little bit of a marketing trick. You gave a little discount for the first five people because I need fifteen hundred dollars until two days. So you give the three times five times three hundred discount and the rest, guys. I'm sorry, thirty percent up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a holistic system, a little bit of a marketing trick. Not a trick, but yeah. I mean, I was honest. I didn't trick anybody. You know, I was honest uh, up front. Those that wanted, they they, they came. So. Um, it's it's a very different reality. So no fear, connection with God, generating bliss, doing what you love, never betraying yourself, never betraying yourself, guys. It's to a point where I, I if I feel in a meeting that a person is starting to humiliate me, and I in the past I would sit there and smile and what what and even maybe pay the bill at the end of the day for both of us. I stand up and I walk out and I put the cash down for my coffee. I say, and I, I'm off. I don't even swear. I don't get aggressive. I just like, this is not for me. Thank you. Bye. And I leave in the middle of the meeting, middle of the meeting, the first two minutes of the meeting, I can walk out. I, I walk into a meeting and I wait, I wait 10 minutes, 10 minutes. If a person hasn't arrived to a meeting, I stand up and I go. Even if I drove there for an hour, mm. I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I mean, I'm not sorry, but guys, if we're making a meeting. Everybody has a watch. Uh, come on, you know, who, what, why? You don't want me to waste 10 minutes of your time sitting. No. So why are you wasting 10 minutes of my time sitting? So I'm sorry, 10 minutes. Usually it was 15, now it's 10 minutes. If 10 minutes they haven't arrived. Uh, if they're telling me that they're coming late, but at least let me know in half an hour in advance. Maybe then I could, if you let me know half an hour, an hour in advance, then I can do some things at my home or I can sit in a cafe longer, do my computer work in a cafe. But if we're meeting at a point, for example, not in a cafe, I have to walk somewhere and I'm meeting you at your office and you're not there. Well, and you haven't phoned me to let me know that you're not there or you're phoning me at the time of our meeting to let me know that you're going to be late. Okay. I'm I'm, a, I'm sorry, dude. That, that that's that's uh, that, that's uh, that's uh, I don't know. There's not even a word for it. I, I'm I'm not interested. W what relationship can we even build after that? What business relationship can we build if if you haven't even phoned me to let me know that you're running late or you're letting me know on the time? Or I'm not interested. So that's what I mean by not betraying yourself. Um, 
Never. You're sitting in a job that you hate. Why the fuck are you there? Get the fuck off there. Not right now. I'd rather eat buckwheat. Buckwheat is the cheapest thing we can get in Russia. It's three three dollars for one kilogram of buckwheat, and that lasts your week. Three dollars. I'd rather eat buckwheat. Um, I'd rather go and pit, pit, uh, whatever. Find potatoes. Go go and plant some potatoes. I, I don't know, but I will not betray myself. Not for a minute. I will not do anything I don't want to do anymore at all. At all. At all. At all. I'm not even doing marketing now, and I have a marketing education background. I'll write an email, and always in that email, I'll speak of love. And guys, by the way, I'm doing a, a course uh, like um, like this email I sent yesterday about uh, this uh, this morning. I had a um, uh, this morning. I had a you know I had a connection here, so th that's the email I sent just to show. So so it, it all relates with me with my talents. So th there is an email, yeah. So I invite them to. Can you see? Hi, I would love to partake. Oh, today I'm running a live Zoom explaining. What yeah, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And I'm talking about uh, Russia being this umbrella for all this insanity. Yeah, as you can see, people and families and little plants. And I put a graphic poster for my 12 uh, for my bioarchitecture training course, which obviously sends, you know, and that's uh, that's that's how. And then it's a quick email. It took me. 15 minutes. I love doing it. I spoke about love. I invited them to a Zoom call and I promoted my online course. And it's just like, that's how it rolls. Do what you love. How can you do anything else? I mean, how can you, how can you do anything else? I, you know, and I'm really trying to get that into you. I'm a guy that never worked uh, ever in my life for anybody else. At the age of 19, I, I, um, my, my mom, this is what happened. Do, do you think I could show a little video of five minutes? Sure. Because uh, it's, 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 a, it's a video of a, a person that chose not to go the traditional way. Just so you guys know why I'm talking about all these things and why I have a right to talk about these things. Um, and I will not do the sound. I'll just explain maybe my... Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the home I'm designing. It's based on, it's like an earthship, but it's, uh, these are not, this is not my picture. That's in my picture in Brazil. So basically that's in South Africa. All those things are built uh, with ecosystems. And uh, um, that's my previous business was Deco, Butterfly Cocoon Chair. Um, basically I worked for one day in a shop. My mom said, okay, son, you finished school. It's time to go working. And I, it's a whole community. And I said, no, mom, I don't want to do that. So I started picking with toothpicks and spandex and making dream catchers that grew into a, a million dollar turnover a year business decorating uh, function like events for Rockefellers and, or, and event companies and uh, insurance companies and so on. So doing this, uh, um, you know, doing this uh, decor for 16 years which allowed me to travel to America and learn from masters of bioarchitecture, like Mike Reynolds and Nadir Khalidi or his students. Um, so that's what I was doing. The, the toothpicks got me to that big business. And then that big business got me to basically starting to build eco homes, which allowed me to go to Mexico. Uh, and in Mexico, I learned Gaudi construction, um, you know, and then coming back to South Africa, build a seashell. Um, and 11 by nine meters, 11 by six and a half meters, uh, learned biogeometry, went to Dom Gaia, uh, John Todd studied with him at California with Mike Reynolds, uh, John Jevons. Yeah, so I learned from all these masters and basically came back and applied all this knowledge uh, in various, um, at my home in South Africa, all this, these are in South Africa. This is all in South, this is what I gave to the bank. Um, that's in Brazil, a workshop uh, with acrete and sandbags. So I travel the world and I teach these um, unique methods of construction, which are low cost. Um, yeah. Um, and they're quite organic in building. It's like a 3D printer, but just uh, 10 times bigger. The, the printing head is 10 times bigger. And it allows you to do most miraculous things. Um, yeah, I don't want to show you the whole video, but it's it's pretty cool. The bath, the wall, uh, you know, you can watch it. And, uh, but yeah, basically the project that I'm doing now, um, oh, even biogas. 
look, I turned my poo on fire. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah, I just experimented. It was all these cool things and uh, a worm tower. And um, so I, I, I experiment uh, by chaff filters. So th there's the worm tower, um, quite cool. And what I'm doing now is developing a home for really cold climate uh, uh, that, uh, uh, oh yeah, in South, in Russia, I already built two homes. Um, uh, the one with, uh, what? $800. I'll show you a home for $800, the whole home. Okay, this is for $10,000 and this is $800 on all the materials. Uh, $800, guys. And this is a home that was in minus 50 Celsius. Uh, Second-hand uh, windows, triple pane, uh, C-grade timber, and uh, and the one window only opens, the little one, a door I made myself. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, and this is the future. This is where I'm going. Homes that can be buried, that can be uh, built in one day. Uh, uh, Pre-printed pieces. This is not mine. This is Philip Block. A filler block research group is uh, amazing architect. Um, yeah, but for now, I don't have that. I have timber and uh, all are these new methods of construction and we'll have rainbows in our homes. So yeah, basically, uh, basically that's, that's what I've been doing all my life. And uh, that's why I have the right to speak of uh, following your dreams, following your passions. Um, you know, and if you're a mom, don't break your children. Uh, like if my mom forced me to go to work, said, no, you go to work. The toothpicks wouldn't have grown into barbecue sticks with little balls and the barbecue sticks wouldn't grow into textiles that are decorated for all these uh, huge companies and the textiles wouldn't turn into bar architecture based on Gaudi forms. And I wouldn't be sitting here right now. I'd be probably already dead because by working in an office or a factory all my life i would have got so depressed i would have picked up a drinking or a weed smoking habit to the fullest where i would mm. self-destruct mm -hmm. so do what you love don't betray yourself but handing over to you sorry i took so long but it was important to share yeah we need to have a festival oh, i can't hear you i said yes we need a festival no? we need five days you can't You're hear mic'd? me i'm unmiked uh, say now can you hear me yeah yeah sorry i switched off my sound yeah yeah that, that's it <laughs> yeah yeah no amazing that's great i mean a lot of people now i mean i have i have that attitude already and it's quite funny because this year i've i've been um traveling a lot and a couple of the the themes were like you know less is more and one one retreat it was sort of like um be something and then when you're be when you are it you know you need you you realize oh i need this as well i need this so i now i want this i want 1500 or whatever you know the things and then it it comes you know once you're so it's kind of like saying it's even easier than thinking you know they're just saying most people think okay i'm going to create a festival this is what i need okay now i'm going to manifest it with the affirmations and it's like no you have to start with really you know like like you said and like a lot of different you know sources say it in different ways and yeah and i, I kind of think of like uh i can't help thinking of like a friend of mine and she's um she's actually she's from croatia and she's been she's been like she's been a vet you know working with animals mm -hmm. and, and apparently it it's horrendous, you know, apparently it's a terrible uh, pressure and um, uh, and the and the management have been very unfair. They 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 made it like there's some kind of something that she did wrong. And she said not only her, others. So they're not they're not only saying you, ha you don't have a job, but she wanted to leave anyway. But they're also, you know, not being right about it. So I thought, OK, well. In a way, I think that's easy. If if you if you're clean, then in a way, yeah, you have to do what you have to do, but you don't have to worry about them. Like you said, you know, they're they're not, not only that, there is no them. There is no them. Somewhere in her consciousness, she is already betraying herself and she's not feeling right about herself. And others are pre are manifesting and showing her what she's already feeling about herself. 
There is no they. Okay. They are just playing up a game. They're just playing up this this theater story. It, 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 that's a whole another story, but I'll let you speak. Yeah. There's no they. <laughs> okay. Well then if if I if I understand correctly, then like this attitude could, you know, somebody could take this kind of um theory and like turn it around to like anything, you know, bad or negative that has ever happened to me, it was never them. I created it all. You know, um, and I I know that's simplifying it. Um, no, but that's very true. I I think I think, uh, yeah. No, no, you're right because uh, that there is them, and other people do do things. Um, yeah, I mean, we we don't know why bad things happen to us. You know, we don't we don't know what bad things we did in the past ourselves. And maybe this is a boomerang lesson of karma. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. This is something we need to learn from that experience of that bad. Uh, for example, for example, um, like my parents told me that they never wanted me. They actually wanted a girl, and and you know, and I was brought up with this idea that I wasn't wanted but that generated so I chose that I'm the I believe in perfection I believe that I'm the creator I believe that I chose my parents yeah for to receive certain programs certain programs that I needed to and that would give me certain experiences in my life that I would then with enough work could shed those programs to see the true essence that you know to clean myself up of all that baggage and uh, what that generated in me is this uh, will to live. Mm -hmm. uh, down to a point where if I didn't have that experience of uh, the way they told me that they didn't want me, when I put my neck, rope, rope over my neck, I would kick the chair off and I would, and I'd go. But because I had that and I'm like, fuck, I want to live. I want to live. Because they told me they didn't want me. I want to live. I deserve to live. Whether I'm loved or not loved, I deserve to live. I want to live. And I didn't kick the chair off. And I can't, I chose to I chose to live. So, you know what I mean? I, one could say from a bad experience, and I, like I will carry this baggage of my parents were bad and did it. My dad drank and uh, destroyed my life. He drank so much. And I was like having this baggage towards him. Um, here's another story. Uh, my dad handed my sister uh, keys to the flat. He, he, he uh, when he died, uh, you know, the will, he wrote her in, but myself and my brother, he didn't write in there. And I was having, I was so angry about it. Three weeks, she came from California. She lives in America. There's a tenant. There was a tenant in this flat. And so they're not letting me live there because there's a tenant. Every time I come to Moscow, I need to hire, I need to rent another flat. And I was just pissed off. I didn't speak to her for three years, two years. And uh, eventually, because I'm working with all of these things that I speak of, and I said, well, how can I even preach about these things if my own system not even speaking to, you know, it, it, it's a fake. It's, it's, uh, I, you know, I, I can't, I, I can't go to people that talk about anything. So it, it's not even about other people. It's just, I wanted to, it's my sister. I love her. She's my younger sister. We always had an amazing relationship until my dad did, you know, again, it, you know, <laughs> he's me and he played it up for me. So I was like, Natasha, you know, I let my mom because my, my mom came from South Africa. My sister came from California and I saw my mom, but I didn't see my sister. And eventually I told my mom, mom, I want to see my sister. Uh, will she be OK with it? Mom said, yeah, sure. She would love to see you. And with my open heart, I came and I hugged my sister and we cried together. And I said, I accept you. Even whatever choices you made with this flat, I don't care. I'm not going to get this flat in the way of our love and our relationship yeah. and i hugged her and i loved her we had a fantastic day at the end of the day a tenant that was renting a flat i think for nine years or seven years phones that day or that morning and they didn't even tell me and he says i am moving out and she's like alosha i'm not getting another tenant in here are the keys 
and she hands me the keys to the flat in Moscow. Wow. Should she, should my father give us, uh, uh, should she split it and give me a part? Because it wouldn't be enough for a whole another flat because a one bedroom flat, you know what I mean? You split a one bedroom flat, maybe you, you might not even get a studio, but even if you get a studio, I would have sold that studio. I would have used the money to travel to do some other workshop with another Mike Reynolds or whatever. I wouldn't even have anything. Now I have a flat in Moscow that's standing there and waiting for me. Yeah. Now, Imagine I wasn't that angry for those three years. And I just said, then I choose to believe in the perfection of all that happens with me and around me. I would have relaxed. I would have had a nice relationship with my sister. And, you know, but we also, we can't live that in the past should have, could have. That's what happened. But just showing you the story of how something that's bad that I transfused, you know, it, it was bad for me. I was fucking angry at her. Fucking angry. How dare you? Little bitch, keep this flat to yourself. We are three children and that should be split three ways. And I'm speaking about the story because I'm sure many other people have had issues with wills and parents giving to one and whatever. It's a big story. But I, this just shows you how I transmuted within myself and I chose to love my enemy <laughs> truly love not like i didn't go there knowing that she was going to give me the keys she told me at the end of the day and the whole day i was like i, I opened my heart said i love you my sister i want to be with you you know you're dear so special to me and boom i, I mean what are the chances of the tenant after seven years to move out uh, that 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 the next day they met then they met him the next day to hand over the keys that he handed the key. That's how it works. So maybe with this whole um, war thing, uh, maybe our biggest lesson is to learn to love our enemies. Maybe that whole phrase, when they slap you, you give another cheek. Although it sounds absurd, I never understood how it works, but maybe it's the freaking essence because when somebody hits you and, and you stand there and you said, ah, you know, it's also not so cut and dry. There's obviously, you know, at some point, if you are feeling your family is a threat, you know, you're not going to sit there and like rape my wife. You know, you're going to get up, you're going to pick up something and you're going to fight. You go, you're going to protect your family. So it's not about this wishy, wishy, soft, cuddly, uh, beat us. You know, I, when you're with God, you will know the right action to do. Let, let's leave it at that, actually. You know, you will know what to do. I can't give you all the answers. All I can say, don't betray yourself. Listen to your soul. Listen to your, your intuition. Because when you when you don't betray yourself, your intuition pumps up. Because you're like, okay, well, what do I feel like now? I feel Because you're constantly asking, what am I feeling? That's why I asked you in the beginning. What are you feeling? So you constantly work with your feelings. And your feelings guide you. They guide you. You, you know, there's one law. <laughs> you live according to happiness. You're either feeling joy or the, for the very least lightness and peace for the very least, but joy, or you're like, uh, it's not working. Well, it's not working. You know, you're feeling like this, not because you need to go through it. Stop, turn around and, and no, feeling terrible is not normal. Feeling fear is not normal. Whatever you've been told, you can say out loud. Whatever I know, all the knowledge I know about feelings, I choose to send it to the light right now. I don't want to know anything. I want to live according to my feelings. I want to feel. And you ask, soul, please come back to me. Please come back to me. I know I have given you up when I didn't want to feel anymore. Please, I ask you, get on your knees. If you're not feeling anything, get on your knees. Maybe even right now and say, I want my soul to come back. And first the pain will come and all those things you shunned under the carpet that you didn't want to feel. And you will cry. I cried for three months, nonstop. Eventually you cuddled yourself up in bed you, you, and you say, Alosha, I love you. Even if there's no woman to touch you and hold you and cuddle you and hug you, I love you. And I'm lying there and tears running, snot and I'm just hugging myself. I love you. I love you. I choose. I choose I'm, I'm here with you until the end. 
obviously. <laughs> so, yeah, but handing over. That's great. Ah, oh, that's a just taking a breath there. Yeah, that's a a great cycle um, to go through. Yeah, I think there's a word in in English. You probably know this word, nuance. Yeah. So, like saying, you know what they say about uh, all this new age um, stuff that it's it's like it's like, um, you know, the other side of things like the Illuminati or whatever, this whole agenda of the stuff. It's like, yeah, both sides are kind of the same. It's like one is preaching this extreme light and the other is this extreme dark. And it's like they both have the truth, but just a piece of it. And so like the in a way you're also speaking the same words it's like it's like this but it's not just like this it's also nuance you know it's kind of like when yeah. when we trust ourselves then we grow this muscle of of self love of yeah this wisdom that and we make mistakes you know so the loving it becomes birthing this child of forgiveness i think you know forgiveness and kindness and yeah, I think it's for now. I I I I feel like we go through these different little eras. Like you know, we had the twenties and the thirties and the forties, and in my personal evolution, I have the time when I needed to really re react strongly to, you know, my mother or and when you know this whatever, and now it's kind of like okay. Now I'm in this era, this generation where, you know, like. What I was expressing before about the the twenty twenty years, you know, it's like, you know, I I had I feel like I had a relatively easy time. I was really active then. I was you know a strong activist doing a lot of things, but I felt like you know, I think I think maybe this is something from Ireland. You know, um, it's like when I I was raw vegan for a long time, only eating mm. what was fresh and you know raw, um, and then one day. I just felt like, what gives me the right? I, I can only do this, like organic food, you know, nuts and stuff, because somebody has money, right? And it, it wasn't me, but I'm so privileged to be able to do that. And then I stepped away from it. I felt like, no, I'm going to try to eat more of what is growing here. And there's cows in Ireland. And, and, and by the same token, the same with um the COVID time, it felt like, except I didn't react. I didn't act on that. I just thought, wow, I'm privileged that I can act like this. I don't know. And I, and I, um, I love the, um, the attitude of, well, the people that I followed then the, the freedom cell movement, which was like, it doesn't matter who's wearing a mask and who's not wearing a mask or even who's even getting a shot and who's giving, not having a shot. What are you going to do in all this? Are you going to continue to buy your food at the shop or are you going to continue to follow the law or the education or the health service, all these things, or are you going to actually, you know, has this happened for a reason? And I felt like, oh, for me, it's a big yes. It's, it felt like, wow, it's such a gift in a way, you know, because before that I was just an artist. So it felt like oh, it's easy. I'm always on the outside of society, but with 2020, it felt like actually, I'm following the rules a lot more than I thought I was. Mm. Actually, mm. There's many ways to play in this game, you know, mm. and like, yeah, I like that. Like you said, fear. And for me, it was also like a death cult, you know, I mean, I, I actually, my work is around conscious death and, and staying connected with those that have died. So I just mean it in a different way where it's all a life based on fear and scarcity, you know, like not enough for everybody and mm. division, all, all these things. And, and I feel like, from what you said it of course i'm taking it and twisting it to suit my ego and feel like oh i'm feeling like what i believed was um you know they're not evil but they were they were teachers as well so mm -hmm. division and fear yeah. Yeah. and neediness and you know poverty all all these are strong teachers and they visit me sometimes and i i learn oh i i didn't learn this last time and now there's more now I'm a big girl. I go to the next level, and and then now I'm meeting something new, like shame or anger. Like I I couldn't I couldn't connect with anger for many years. You know, mm -hmm. it was only sadness, only grief, and it just felt like this endless well of, mm -hmm. of 
of sadness and now the anger is kind of coming out and it's it's like good because it's great you know just to feel very like... important what you're saying i just want to chime in that we are all striving to be this light fluffy angels you know completely shunning down our dark side and we have both mm. we have both and if we accept the our dark side um and understand that it's there for a reason it's just so much easier to live like uh for example like i could have like no no we don't swear in this conversation we're only raw vegan here and and that's it and we only talk about love and we talk about light and and all this new age bullshit you know um that comes with a dark side suddenly boom cancer like but we only spoke about love and light and never swore and never ate meat or where so yeah i'm also i'm resonating what you said but carry on the, the, accepting your dark side and anger and anger is is part of darkness and we need we need to learn to work with it yeah and i think it's tempting to uh to feel like i need to figure it out you know but like you said i feel of course maybe it's just my my idea of how it works but Hmm. Yeah, just kind of allowing allowing this to be. And I feel like, yeah, I, I really feel um that we you know, we we have we have a reason why we're here, you know. So you know, even though I felt like yeah, I'm I'm doing something useful um and needed maybe in twenty twenty, in twenty twenty one. And yet there was a point when it felt like I'm also a musician, so I need to go back to this as well. And, you know, just feeling like I'm I'm still learning about who, who I am. And it feels like they say every seven years, you're totally new. All the different cells have renewed or died. Mm, and mm, mm. Thing. I don't know. It just feels like I don't have to put a number on it. That's nice. I, it just feels like who knows? It, it can. It's a little bit like. um maybe it is regular but i feel like i'm i'm just open for whatever you know during during 2020 you know i found myself feeling a little bit like with people that were fearful i felt like oh i don't want to be it's it's, it's, it's interesting that you uh, mentioned already more than 10 times 2020 it's almost like it feels like maybe there's something you haven't processed from that time, but you keep on going back to 2020. I, I haven't, I mean, I spoke of COVID when I lost my house and, you know, then I like walked out of it and I forgot about it. Well, I haven't forgot about it because different people are tell the same story, but, <laughs> but it seems like you also, you, you, you said 2020 many times. So it seems like there's something that's still maybe, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, you'll know. I'm not here to tell you what you know or don't know, but maybe there's something that's still holding you in that reality of 2020 that you feel you feel some um, unfairness that happened. Also, you had a bit of emotional that you felt that the government did this thing for us and this this mess that they caused. Um, and I want to bring you back to this idea that they didn't cause this. Um, remember we spoke about that the, your what your your daughter your nephew who who said that we always accustomed to see the negative in the world. Oh yeah, my daughter. Yeah. Okay. Now imagine eight billion people are all seeing uh, a reality a bit more negative than positive, quite a bit more negative than positive. So this eight billion people with their thoughts constantly seeing this dark world scary place out there eight billion of us okay uh are creating this evil machine that we don't want but we're creating it constantly by by observing it by fueling it by playing the game as you said a lot more than you thought by the rules you know, that's the one thing I wanted just to chime in. The second thing is like um, this freedom cell movement. Um, you know, I, I had a meeting scheduled twice with Derek Bronze and twice he didn't end up coming to the meeting. Oh, what was he doing? I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I can't judge, but uh, he forgot, he said. Mm. The meeting that he scheduled um, twice. 
so that's the next thing I want to mention. And the third thing I want to mention is that, yeah, we all want to grow food on the land. And, and, and I tried, I tried. And I realized that I'm not a farmer. Like I don't want to grow food on the land. I'm in a city now. And um, the good news about Russia that uh, the grannies who grow food on their land and the grandpas, they're allowed to sell on the streets without any licenses. Nice. I can go and get organic at, at the you know, local markets. They're growing amazing tomatoes. But I don't get there. I, I go to the shop downstairs and I get... I get what I get, you know, and I try and get the best of um, what I can find, but maybe sometimes with those pesticides. Mm. But you know what? Uh, even electromagnetic radiation, I'm generating so much love from my heart, like just the calmness, even like if I'm not feeling bliss, you know, I'm just calmness, like just feeling good and calm that I feel like electromagnetic radiation is not touching me. I, I'm sorry. I don't feel I'm not scared of it. I'm not, it's not touching me. It's not part of my reality. Right. Um, yeah. And uh, non-organic food. Yeah. It's, it's not the best. Of course, we're striving. We're working towards it. But the reality is that it's not there yet. Uh, I don't want to grow food right now. I want to chat with you. <laughs> I want to share about love. And, uh, you know, I'll try and get as organic as I can when it, it comes around. But, you know, I'm not going to freak out about it. You know, uh, we're not all farmers. I tried. 2011, I left to the land in South Africa and I bought seven hectares. I said, dollar is evil, money is evil. And I'll just go and uh, do my own thing and start building a permaculture school. I had this dream and um, and nobody came no people no people because I was so far out from the city nobody came to visit me um you know uh, so eventually I left there because you can be on the most beautiful piece of land if there are no people around I'm sorry um it ain't going to work unless you're smoking weed and you're forgetting about your reality and you're thinking oh it's la la land the you know I'm just in my own little bubble and up to a point, and then, you know, you see those hippies that are smoked weed for all their life. They're most probably alone. Um, and they're like far out from reality, actually. You know, they may speak wise things, but, you know, they won't make it to a meeting one time or whatever, you know. So I, I don't know. It's not all so clean cut. Um, my path is a path of clean, I'm not uh, partaking in alcohol, drugs, um yeah so uh, although i can't prove with millions of dollars that my thing is working all i can say is what i need is i have when if i have if i find a partner and we have a child i can most surely assure you that <laughs> i'll have more than 1500 dollars because that's what i need at that time i'll need to build my home but i don't need that now the, the whole thing of even having a, a family and children and that stability, because I had all of that. I, I didn't find happiness. I'm not saying that one will not find happiness in the future if one is in a good state, but one sh should definitely not try and find a wife and children to become happy because that ain't going to make you happy. And uh, those that in their 20s <laughs> uh, don't believe us, but those that are in their 40s know that that is true after second divorce, you know. So, um, yeah, but I feel like we should have another call and I want to hear your story. I want to hear your story and your, and your realizations, because I mean, this time I did speak a lot more and, you know, I needed to share that, but I also feel like it will be fair for, um, for us to, for, for you to share your story and maybe we should schedule a call for next week if it's okay with you. Sound. Yeah. So next week is. Tuesday. Okay, we can just say at the same time, same place. And if something comes up, we'll. Okay, I'll schedule it in my calendar. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for allowing me to speak and to listen. And yeah. It's been lovely. Thanks for trusting me and sharing, you know, your truth. Beautiful. Yeah. Great to get to know you. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And we'll chat about bike architecture, but it, it's not important, guys. What I realize is that if you're not coming from a good space in your heart, all this bike architecture is useless. Um, 
because when you when one ends up alone in your most sexy dome home on the land and you no longer have a family and children are not speaking to you you know you're not going to be happy there I, I i can assure you i ran away very quickly from my dome very quickly seven times i traveled to russia in two years from my dome home because I couldn't be there alone. I wanted uh, people and I wanted people. And I was running away from weed as well because South Africa, weed was allowed to be sold everywhere. So it's very much easier to smoke it. Just like, you know, oh, you, don't, you don't let your feelings come up. As soon as something comes up and you're like feeling a little uncomfortable and a little emotional, like, oh, it feels so good, man. I don't want to feel that. That's how we that's how we leave our soul here, there. Our soul literally is given to the plant um in trade for the numbness, for the nerve, nervous, ner nervous, nervous endings, uh and nerve connections and you know, they just get stunned and numb, you know. Yeah. The nerve endings yeah. are cut. Yeah, exactly. So um seven times i traveled because in russia uh, it's much harder to find weed so i wanted that sanity i wanted real conversations i was running away from drugs uh, to russia seven times in two years i spent all my money on it so yeah so and uh yeah so we need people we can't be alone it's uh i even tried it this summer i, I couldn't i couldn't in the most beautiful place waterfalls 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 like fairy tale land i stayed there months and in one month i traveled one time to moscow and four times to sochi which is a biggest city by the black sea because there were people there but yeah anyway thank you thank you so much great to meet you <laughs> good i'll send you the recording right away great thanks so much have a great bye. evening you too bye have a good day Thanks.